everybody's talking about the no-code AI tools. You have lovable.new and bolt.dev, but the ones that no one is pointing to is Cursor and Windsor. And if you're trying to get into this space to develop an app, to develop your idea, you need to know this. I'm a college student building an AI startup to 100K by the end of the year. And when I first entered this space, everyone was telling me about these no-code tools, Lovable, Bolt. And once I got into it, I loved it. It had a beautiful UI interface. It was so amazing to set up and it was millions of light years away from when that would have taken me weeks. But as soon as I started to develop more, I realized that it gets you nowhere when you get into complicated things. So the biggest mistake I made was when I started out with Bolt, I developed the front end. And if you don't know what the front end is, front end is the thing that makes it look pretty. So anytime you go to a website, they have UI buttons, little buttons, little icons you click on. The way the website looks, that is the front end at its core. But what you don't know is behind the scenes, there's a back end. The one that everyone always says that's taking your information, it is. That's the back end. That's the back end that gets complicated when you're using these tools. Bolt and Lovable do a decent job at integrating databases using Superbase, but they don't do a good job at really making the UI and the UX design modern, and they don't do a good job at helping you develop complex things that are actually usable in the real world. So. I'm gonna walk you through what I did to go around that and where I think you should go from the beginning. If you are someone just getting started in this area, in this industry, and to someone who's already pretty established, they have some coding experience, or if you're ballsy and wanna jump in, I support it, so let's make it happen. The first platform we're gonna go into is Bolt. Bolt and Lovable are very, very, very similar. And what I would highly recommend is when you're getting into that app, just play around with general prompts. You can look at different examples. There's a lot of examples online. Just look up no code prompts for app ideas. But the way I prefer to do it, and I think it's a higher leverage way, is use ChatGPT to develop the idea behind your prompt. And then what I would do is take ChatGPT's formulation and give it to Claude because it's more verbose and it's better at developing more technical language with Claude's model. What I would then do is take that entire prompt and put that into Bolt. The biggest issue I ran into when working with Bolt is that the platform itself if you don't know what you're doing, you have no idea what the files are like. So what I would recommend if you're just starting out, have it explained to you and say, hey, I'm a young developer. I have no clue what I'm doing. And it will actually formulate readmes, which are files that explain to you what different things are. I have been developing for, God, like three, four years now. And what I would say is that even I was looking at this like, I have no clue what's going on. So don't feel like you're alone in that area because even the most advanced, and I'm not king developer, but I'm, I'm, I know what I'm doing. So don't know what's happening in this. So just take it as it's will and you're just gonna learn it as you go. What's really interesting about this, and this is where I got frustrated, is once you start to develop with Bolt, you get comfortable with it and understand how it works. The thing that you need to learn is that every single prompt that you put into Bolt cost you. So the subscription that I paid for was $20. And what I noticed is, is one simple task to change the color would cost me 40 cents. And every single time you prompt it, that cost you. So you have to be very aware of how you are prompting these models and do a very good job at how you prompt it and put a lot of thought into it. I would highly recommend 
using ChatGPT and Claude for every time we are prompting it. And just having a general understanding of tech language lingo will go a long way. The biggest issue that Bolt develops after it creates your app and idea is it's not very good at routing, meaning that when you're trying to chain different pieces together, for example, landing page, the first thing that someone comes into to look at your website, and then you want to route it to your pricing page. It's terrible at it. It doesn't do well at backend. It does decently well at front end. So it can do that. And what I would recommend if you're really into front end, making things look pretty, go ahead and use 21first.dev to do it. The first time I prompted it with the entire prompt, it did a terrible job. Prompt it with their prompt separately to develop your app. It's a lot of prompting. Okay, that's stage one bare bones. Now, if you're actually looking to get into some real shit, I would recommend using Cursor. Win Windsor is, if I say that right, is a better... They're very, very, very similar models, but I prefer Cursor just because you get more bang out of your buck for a $20 subscription. And the way Cursor works is you can almost do the exact same thing as Bolt, but it's way, way, way better at developing backend. Meaning that if you want to connect it to Superbase, which is um, a, a database that does like SQL, which is something that could help you create logins for your users. You could do payment plans, which Bolt does, but it doesn't do it that well. That's why I prefer using it with Cursor. The next advantage of using Cursors is you can actually have it work with ChatGPT, which is very cool. So the trick that I have found is that I can take my files from Cursor I have a download on ChatGPT and it connects both of them. So when I'm typing in ChatGPT to ask questions, it can refer to the files that I have on Cursor, which is amazing because if you're a student and you get a discount, it's free development. Highly recommend doing that if you have the opportunity and that resource available. With Cursor, the thing that I would recommend you doing as well is if you're in it, it's going to look very scary. If you are not a developer, you're going to have no clue what you're doing. Just Google a tutorial on creating a file. All you have to do, if you are have zero clue at all about development, create a file in your folder, like, like go to your folder, create a file, and then open that file with cursor. And then you can go to its agent and just type your question and give it an idea of like, hey, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm trying to do. And specify, please do this. Specify that you have zero clue what you're doing and you need hand holding throughout the process because it will do that for you so that you have a clue what's going on. If you don't do that, you will still have no clue what's going on. But that's half of development. Most of the time, you'll just figure it out as you go but that's the way I would go about it. The advantages and disadvantages of the two processes is Bolt framework, good architecture for visualizing, building out somewhat UI very fast, which is nice. Uh, cursor can do front end. So that it is, I, I, I just would prefer cur Cursor. After doing both of them, I would say Cursor is better if you're more development handy, if you want more control, autonomy, and actually want to build real shit, use Cursor. If you want to kind of just build like some pretty interfaces and maybe do some light backend, that's where I would go and use Bolt for Lovable. That's it for today. I hope you guys are having a great week. I will catch you all later and go freaking build cool shit. All right. See y'all. Peace.